We're coming to the end of the Olympic Games, and it's great to see teenagers like Redmond Girard and Chloe Kim winning gold at such a young age. But when it comes to the Olympics, if we forget about the glory of a medal, who's really winning? A handful of athletes make money from sponsorships, but mostly the competitors aren't going to get rich. They're in it for other reasons. As for host nations, these are astoundingly expensive events, costing more than many countries' annual GDP. So are they really getting a return on this investment? Hosting is expensive. Every game in the last 50 years has gone over budget. The 2014 Sochi Winter Games went over its $10 billion budget by an additional $41 billion. Let's look at a quick breakdown of the profit and loss for an Olympic Games. The main costs are creating stadiums and other venues, expanding transport infrastructure, and the extra cost of policing. The Nagano Games in Japan in 1998 created a new line for their Shinkansen bullet train connecting the Olympic site to Tokyo. The London 2012 Games extended lines on the tube to allow for the Olympic traffic. The UK also needed to pay $355 million to the private security firm G4S since their police force would have been stretched too thin. The total cost can vary from game to game since it's the infrastructure that's the big cost. Athens needed a new airport, which was a big part of the $15 billion they spent. Salt Lake City was already well equipped to host this kind of event, so they only spent $2 billion. The most expensive was the last Winter Olympics in Sochi, which came to over $50 billion. The profit is much harder to calculate. The sponsorship deals are huge. Tokyo 2020 already has $3 billion in sponsorship deals with over 40 local sponsors. You can expect that number to rise, even though McDonald's pulled out of their 41-year partnership with the Olympics last year. Then there's TV revenue. This year, NBC paid $963 million for the US rights to the Pyeongchang Olympics. And even though viewer figures are lower than expected, the network's already sold 900 million in ad spots, so it looks like they'll at least break even or pull a profit. The global total for rights is around 4 billion, and 90% of that will go to South Korea. 10% is kept by the IOC. And ticket sales and merchandising could bring in another 1 billion. The unquantifiable benefit is tourism. Sure, there'll be a boost while the crowds are there, but does this convert to anything long term? That's what really separates the profitable games from the non profitable. Rio de Janeiro didn't need a bigger public profile, it was world famous already, unlike Pyeongchang or Salt Lake City. So it hasn't gained from a lasting boost, and most of the stadiums are already being left to rot. But then, on the other side, Barcelona in 1992 put the city on the map. Those beaches that were created have become a big part of their tourist draw, and the renovation along the seafront has made it into one of Europe's best tourist destinations. More recently, the Sochi Games might have come at a huge cost, but it's certainly improved tourism to the area. That's been undermined by Russia's international sanctions, but it's not so relevant to the impact of the Games. Sochi is also a host city for the Soccer World Cup this year, so that cuts the cost of any investment needed there too. At the end of the day, for a host nation, it's still a gamble. A lot of countries will be watching South Korea over the next couple years as the world wonders, is the Olympics a game worth playing? So who wins the most from the Olympics? Surprisingly, the answer is the sponsors. Whether you're over in the Olympic Park or here in the Olympic Fan Zone, what you won't find a whole lot of is brand competition. That's because the only refreshments you can buy are the Coke brand, the only beers, Brazil's Skull. In fact, the city of Rio de Janeiro has turned into one big advertisement. The Olympics gives brands one of the largest audiences on Earth, where they can be a part of events people will remember forever. Sporting excitement and national pride are powerful things to tag your name onto. This year, the interesting name is Alibaba, the Chinese retail giant who have used this games to launch their first ever brand campaign. See the comments for a video we did on Jack Ma's Forrest Gump strategy. And although the price tag is high, typically $100 million for a four-year cycle as a sponsor, they get an insane level of control over the promotion of the event. For the period around the Olympics, they get exclusive use of words and phrases. Rule 40 in the Olympic Charter restricts public references to Olympic competitions exclusively to sponsors that have paid for it. If you think about all the search traffic that gives them control over, as well as visibility on all the TV coverage, you see why they're spending big. Want to learn more about business theory and history? Be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of our next segment.